unfortunately, the uh, the videos on the Birka hat uh, will have to wait a little while. I can't really do any hand sewing right now because on Saturday, I was making the uh, the bales for a couple of these pendants with uh, some coins, and I sliced my thumb open twice, so it's still a little tender. So I won't really be able to do hand sewing probably for the rest of the week. Um, but today's video is kind of cool because yesterday I got I got a package in from a company in Germany called Para Paris. Uh, they're a very good uh, reenactment supplier. The only I guess criticism I have is that they are a little bit hard to deal with if you don't speak German. Uh, they rely on Google Translate to translate their page, and so it ends up being kind of disjointed and buggy because Google Translate isn't necessarily the best for that kind of thing. Uh, so I will give you a closer look of what I have. So what we had received yesterday were uh, one of these brooches and this pendant. Um, so with the brooches, they are for my girlfriend's garb. Uh, she wanted something that was sort of different than you know your typical uh, tortoise shell brooch or uh, oval brooches, um, and so she had received one of these for uh, for Christmas, and they are very very beautiful and different than most other things. They're one of the uh, the less viewed uh, finds from Birka. Um, they're actually in uh, Jan Peterson's book outlining that find. They are, I don't know the exact metal that they're made of, but they are silver plated. Um, I think best I could find uh, was that they were made, uh, I assume it's German, uh, called German silver, uh, which is sort of a nickel compound. Um, they, they feel heavy enough that they're not made of uh, like a like a pot metal or something like that but they're also not flexible enough uh, and, and they're hard enough they're not not likely made of pewter um, plus they would have probably just said pewter instead of this uh, this word that just wouldn't translate um, I'll if anybody's interested I'll put the word in the the description uh, it just escapes me at the moment so these are actually identified in Jan Peterson's book, and there's a very nice picture of them. Um, and on the back, you see a very fairly authentic um, design for the pin. That's very simple. And so instead of having the typical modern round pin, where you basically have a spring coil that forms, this just go goes uh, through the little bale and then springs back down. So when it's unhooked, it's totally free of thing, and so that I think that's a pretty, pretty authentic uh, mechanism. Maybe not the exact one that was used, because uh, I believe some of them had a pin that just slid through. But I'm not too sure on these ones. Um, there wasn't a, a very good picture of the back of the original. Um, as for the front, there is uh, a a fairly large difference between the originals and these ones. All of the design is the same, the basic shape is the same. This is a very low relief compared to the the uh, originals. The originals actually have a lot of depth to the carving and that was probably because uh, these ones appear to be you know surface uh, surface molded with the components soldered to the back whereas the originals were probably done with lost wax which means it's a lot easier to to cast um, excuse me cast two of them identical um, or more or less identical because you just carve your waxes to be fairly close and then cast them with as much depth as possible. Um, so they do differ from the originals, but they are true enough of replicas that they do the job. Um, so I'm going to try to get a close-up. I don't know if this will work so well uh, with focus, but they are incredibly beautiful. So these were from a grave in Birka. 
uh, so the pendant. Uh, I sort of, I was looking for one, and I was, uh, I found one that was, um, Loki's face. And it was a, a crit, uh, with crazy grin and everything, and, and the, uh, the pointy beard, and, and all that stuff, and, uh, I was interested in getting that one. Um, and there was another one that I was looking at as well. And that one was sort of a, a sh almost a shield-shaped piece. And upon reading more about them, I found that the uh, the Loki face one was actually uh, was a true rep reproduction of a pendant that was found in Russia. And just wanting to be true to the rest of my garb, I wanted something that was more uh, feasible. And and the story of my character who traveled from. Uh, Kalpang in Norway to Uppsala in Sweden and back. Um, and so I wanted someone that he could conceivably get on that journey. And in a roundabout way, he could have, in theory, gotten something from Russia. But I just wanted something a little closer to home, so to speak. Uh, the other piece, the, the shield-shaped one, was actually based on a, uh, a scabbard shape that was found. And... At first, I, I thought, you know, that was that was not something that was necessarily something I wanted. Um, so then I looked further in and decided on this one. But later on, I'd actually read about how uh, sometimes when the object, a piece of a piece of brass, a piece of gold, a piece of silver, a piece of bronze uh, that was used, it was still valuable. Valuable, and so if it wasn't being used for its original purpose, let's say a scabbard shape it might be then converted into a brooch or a pendant. And so what I had thought was something that was wrong wasn't. Uh, it, it actually conceivably happened in period. So that would have also been an option. But when I found this one, I instantly fell in love with it. Uh, partially, partially because some of the faces on it look like raccoons, uh, even though I believe they're bears. Uh, they sort of look in between a wolf and a bear, but they have round ears, so I assume bear. And the, uh, so those are the inner faces. Uh, the outer faces, they are sort of gri uh, grizzled, making fearsome faces, more so in the original than this one. Uh, but they have bear ears on, yet they're very humanoid. So I almost think that this is a boar style, uh, a boar style representation of berserkers. And so that fits my character and my function in the group fairly well. Um, so this, uh, this pendant is very nice. Uh, and it has an interesting story behind it. Uh, the original uh, was found in Tromsø in northern Norway. And it was actually discovered by two uh, five-year-old boys. They were playing outside in their family's garden, and they found, under a tree root, they found, I believe, the pendant and another object. Uh, then the parents called the university, uh, it's the University of Tromsø, and they brought an archaeologist to, to search for, for more. And they ended up finding uh, lengths of chain, some with very beautiful uh, um, dragon head finials on them. And so it's a, it's a fairly interesting find, uh, something along something along the same lines as uh, the the young boy in England that found one of the most valuable pieces of Anglo-Saxon art, um, and it's amazing what what children will find, and you know you you think that oh the oh a child will hang on to pretty much anything, and that's actually a very good thing because. They like to hang on to their treasures. They like to find, or they like to uh, to show off their treasures too, which leads you to go, okay, well, these children will will actually be fairly instrumental in preserving the cultural history of the places they are, because um, they can find some very important things, and because they like to show off their treasures to their parents and everything. If the parent is uh, is a little knowledgeable and, and a little excited about it as well, then the, uh, the cultural heritage gets preserved. So it's very lucky that those two boys stumbled onto to this. 
Um, so the original, uh, it doesn't have the holes in it like this does. Uh, the original has is, is totally solid. Um, as well, on the original, it's again a lot deeper of a relief. Uh, this is incredibly low relief. Um, and some of the knot work is a little different on the original. Uh, there are actually two more rings of this rope work around the outside. The uh, bears on the inside are actually biting the knot work on the original. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and as well, the way that the, the bale is on this is different than on the original. Uh, the original actually has two little loops at the top, uh, as well as it was found with a bead that has a groove cut in it that may have actually been attached to where those two loops are and a cord passed through there. So this is a, a fairly good replica uh, for what it is. Um, it's not a tr an absolutely true replica, and if I think if I wanted to get an absolutely true replica, I would have to order a custom one, um, because it's just not as feasible for some some for a company to make something mass produced um, that they're going to sell for for nine euros. Uh, it's just not feasible for them to make one of that level. Um, but this is incredibly beautiful, and it it works perfectly fine um, as well they always they always stamp their uh, their mark on on the back uh, so one thing that this this uh, pendant came with was this cord it's your sort of standard necklace cord um, I think it's it's like a, co a cotton blend um, black cord uh, the only reason that I cut it off to put the leather on is well there's two reasons uh, one is I didn't feel that it was authentic enough for my tastes. Um, I would like something a little more natural, a little more authentic. As well, this cord kind of irritated my neck a little bit. Um, and I find that kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know why it did. It, it's, not, it's not something that should. It uh, doesn't, doesn't feel weird in my hands or anything. It just, my neck didn't like it. Um... So I put the leather on, but that's a, a fairly easy thing. Uh, most people probably wouldn't have a problem with the cord. Um, you know, so that's that. Uh, it, it is really nice that they, they do this. I wasn't expecting them to, to send a piece of cord with it as well. Uh, and the cord is, is a lot longer than you'll really need. I think, like I, I have a, I'm fairly tall and I have a, uh, a big neck, and the cord that they gave would basically, if I tied the two ends together, you know, kind of like that, um, it would have made it hang about at the level of my belly button. So there was quite a lot of cord there. So if you if you need a, a lot of extra, that's, that's a good thing. Um, so one last thing about these uh, is that I noticed there seems to be a difference in quality from the first one that was purchased, uh, if you look at the uh, the hook mechanism here, the the bale here is fairly small, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually soldered very well all the way around. Um, there's also a bit of a different polish on the front compared to the newer one, which has slightly less polish. Um, it it feels. It feels a little different, so maybe the the plating has changed. Uh, they're about the same weight and everything, so that's good. But the bail for the the hook or the uh, the the uh, pin has gotten a lot beefier, uh, as well the solder around this post doesn't look like it's quite as soldered on as the first one that was purchased. Um, but everything else is pretty good and I think they will act, they'll actually wear down to the same level. And I actually think that the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the quality of the front of it 
is probably because these were cast out of, um, I would actually say the exact same mold, uh, just, you know, maybe a, a few hundred different, um, or, or maybe a hundred different or something. Um, and that would account for the slight differences and the slight, slight, um, uh, difference in quality of this one to this one. Um, because the, the molds they use do, do wear out after a number of castings. Um, they don't last forever. So, I think, I, I honestly think that's what the, the, the difference is. Um, this one I think is actually a little bit thinner than the first one as well. Just, just a little bit. Not by much. So, that's, those are really my only critiques of it. That there was a difference in quality of the two. Um, and that, uh, the, the cord irritated my neck, but that is probably just me. Um, you know, I also wear a, a copper Viking knit chain all the time. And, you know, it might have been that this plus the cord kind of changed, uh, changed something or, um, uh, my neck was irritated because of the, uh, the Viking knit chain and then the cord irritated it more I don't I don't know but other than that it's I, I do recommend these products I do recommend that you check out their store um, it's very very affordable uh, so apart from the slight uh, differences between the originals and these reproductions uh, I couldn't really be happier um, they are some very beautiful pieces that will work very well with the various kit that they're going with um, apart from the uh, slight differences from the originals and the um, difficulty of using the Google Translate function on their website, uh, Paraparis is a pretty great store. Uh, they offer um, they offer great merchandise that's within the budget of most reenactors. Um, you can get some pretty good deals and things. Um, the only other criticism I have for them is just the way that they were shipped, uh, they were shipped in a box, one of those like flat rate boxes. Uh, the two pieces were put into little bags, Ziploc bags, or, or um, I think the one was just a little plastic wrap thing with a big glue on the end, um, and then stuck in the box. And it might just be me, but I don't really like the way that that was shipped. Um, you know, I, I, if I was going to ship something out like this, um, and I have before, uh, being a blacksmith, uh, shipping up pendants and things like that, uh, I generally would wrap them in, you know, put, put them in a little bag and then wrap the bag in either bubble wrap or newspaper or something, um, especially if I was shipping more than one in the same container. Um, I tended to favor uh, padded envelopes over boxes, but I'm not going to, you know, try and try and force another company to to ship in padded envelopes when they can ship in a flat rate box. Um, so there's that. Uh, and that just, you know, stops the two pieces from being able to actually make contact with each other. Luckily, there's not any visible damage on any of it, so I guess, I guess it worked out. But um, it's just something that shows a little more care to, to wrap things up a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's... I have no problems. Um, I used the cheapest shipping option, and it took, I think, uh, nine days to get here. I, I shipped it. I ordered it on a Thursday night and got it on the second Monday. So it's it, that was pretty fast. I was expecting, you know, 10, 10 to 15 days. Um, depend, but it depends on customs. Um, they could get held up in customs, and then you have more time waiting. Uh, but I think anything under about 100 bucks, customs doesn't really care too, too much. Uh, if it's over a hundred bucks, then they kind of want their to get the taxes and, and everything their their uh, importation fees and stuff. Um, and so these are these are great. I recommend shopping. Uh, I recommend checking out their products and uh, and shopping there. Um, and if you see any of their products at different vendors around, uh, at like the the let's say the Boer Viking market. They might have, there might be a stall that has their products um, because they do supply different uh, vendors and, and 
all that stuff at, at all these different events. Um, this, I just want to say one final thing about this pendant. Uh, to me, it not only signifies um, sort of the, the Berserker and, and all that stuff, sort of what the, the art style is, uh, not only is it a beautiful pendant, but to me it also signifies a success. Uh, so often you hear about, um, more so in, in Eastern Europe than, uh, than in Scandinavia, uh, but you hear about a lot of grave goods that get, basically, basically people who loot the graves. Uh, then, then they sell those goods to a, an antiquities dealer. Um, and then it goes into, you know, the, the fair market and everything, but there's no provenance behind it. Um, they don't say, you know, this was found at this grave, this area, this culture, this person. Um, it just goes away. Um, and at that point, museums don't even want that stuff anymore. And so that's part of the cultural heritage that gets thrown in the garbage. Uh, because, you know, you can't tell the story behind it or anything. Um, and so in, in my opinion, yes, I would absolutely love to, to own a Viking sword or a Viking axe or some Viking jewelry, authentic pieces. I would love to, but I would never do it, uh, only because, uh, it just takes away from everybody else. If it's in my house hanging on my wall or, or kept in a, in a safe because it's very valuable or, or whatever, it, it takes away from uh, everybody else's enjoyment. Nobody else gets to see it. Nobody else gets to, to see the, uh, the energy and everything of it. No, no, every, nobody gets to see the beauty of it. Um, and so why rob the world of something like that? Uh, so I definitely do not support uh, the sale of antiquities. To quote Indiana Jones, uh, you know, that should be in a museum. Uh, and that's, that's true. So, especially when you have the ability to own replicas of things, things that, you know, they might not be, they aren't, the, they aren't exactly the same. They're not something that, you know, was held by a uh, 10th century Viking hand or anything. But to me, this has the same energy and everything as the original. Um, and it, to me, this piece represents a success story for uh, the world, for preserving cultural heritage, because the boys that found it showed it to their parents, and their parents knew that if they didn't send it to the museum, if they didn't send it to the, to the university, if they didn't get these people to, to come and excavate further, that part of their country's cultural heritage would be gone forever. Um, so it represents a large success for archaeology, for cultural heritage. Um, and so I, uh, I thank anyone that does the right thing and contacts the right people to, to show these things and to preserve them. So you know, thank you for watching. Um, if you like what you see, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them below. Uh, I try to respond to every comment that comes in. Um, and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, also, um, you can feel free to follow my Facebook page. I post all the links to these videos as well as uh, sometimes text posts to, to talk about various things and to keep people posted on events that the group that I'm doing, or the, the group that I'm with are doing, um, as well as uh, sometimes I post pictures and stuff. So if you want to do that, that's awesome. Uh, the link is below. Uh, and I think the next video that I will do while my thumb is on the mend uh, is about how to get started in reenactment. Uh, not just Viking reenactment, but pretty much any kind of reenactment. Um, I'm just gonna basically be making a bunch of blanket statements um, that sort of talk about how you can get involved. So, see you around.